Diana Vlazimirovna, de Andrija Vlazimirovic, de colleagues. Will you allow me to introduce you some ideas with regards to treating of nasopharynx at, uh, carcinoma at present? You know the statistics. If percentage-wise we say that cancer of nasopharynx is not a frequent pathology. In absolutely the cases, 84,000 people in 2015 and estimate mortality, these are quite big figures, 60,000. Please pay attention that the uh, there are differences in different countries, difference in terms of age groups and survival and mobility. If we look at this diagram, pay attention. Here we are more likely to speak about young patients, or patients of the working age. This is an important social problem. And surgeons fully um, uh, gave that uh, priorities to conservative methods, but please pay attention to this share, to this percentage. Actually, mortality related to conservative methods of treatment, uh, the data for 2004, yes, on the one hand, we, we want to treat everyone, want to make it maximally aggressive. On the one hand, we have to avoid the situation when our patients would be a part of this percentage. Uh, so the surgeons, all the team of specialists dealing with uh, head and neck diseases uh, have, um, uh, well, are considering this term of Le Fever, quality of survival, which brings together the issues of survival and quality of life. And uh, it's more often that uh, the works are devoted to these issues, say, when about half of the patients prefer a good quality of life without guarantee of full, uh, 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 full recovery. And if you look at the consolidated data of 2016, Elise Citra in Europe, the trend is well known to you at early stages. Radiation therapy is uh, domineering at nasopharyngeal diseases. And at the second stage, they discussed issues of uh, medication modification with advanced forms. Nasopharyngeal diseases have to be treated by uh, radio uh, chemical methods. If you look at uh, ESMO data of 2010, uh, which is an official guideline. Radiotherapy is the main method of treatment in mono regimen, the first stage, in combination with chemotherapy. Uh, the third and fourth stages recommended to conduct radiotherapy with modulated intensity or 3D uh, rendering. Uh, and uh, uh, high doses are recommended uh, as a prophylaxis. Plus, uh, they provide prophylactic radiation of the zones of potential potential spread um, uh, in terms of uh, local potential relapse and lethal collective. If you look at CCN data, please uh, look at the link, uh, reference at each page of guidelines. If we translate that, um, a CCI team considers that participation in clinical trials provides uh, better management of oncological patients. One hand, there are standards and recommendations, but if we can uh, move away from them in, in in favor of better treatment is not excluded. So these are the standards uh, uh, for 2016. Local forms provide independent radiation treatment, more advancement with primary uh, lesion and nose. Here, first uh, stage uh, implies clinical trials. All the rest is uh, considered as possible variants, simultaneous chemo radiotherapy with adjuvant treatment, a radiochemical uh, treatment without adjuvant chemo uh, treatment, separate groups of patients with induction polychemotherapy. Then there is assessment of the effect and uh, lymphadenectomy issue is considered separately and individually. And if you look at local forms, these are the modern methods and and uh, potentials of, of delivery, delivering the doses. On one hand, local precision delivery of the doses allows to provide escalation of the dose in the area of uh, irradiation, uh, plus uh, 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 we can uh, uh, ca calculate less uh, less toxic dose. A combination of diagnostic methods. When we see that MRI, here is the volume on CT, which is not identified. Uh, here we can uh, introduce them into the target and. Uh, uh, we can provide uh, high precision dose, uh, positioning control. Uh, this can be done uh, 
uh, we can separately consider the dose of incurable patients. There is an experience with 67 patients, the stages of dissemination of the process, and uh, they considered uh, induction polychemotherapy when uh, we decide not to do chemotherapy, uh, uh, radiotherapy in the beginning. And here are patients with intracranial growth. They had induction chemotherapy uh, treatment with different uh, regimen, which allowed to take them for radiation therapy thorough one. These are the results. These are the direct results. Have a look how well uh, the primary lesion differed, and uh, then we had morphological confirmation and improvement of response in lymph collectors. If you look at clinical case, if in this gr we have to deal with these kind of groups of patients, uh, 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 the nasopharyngeal uh, carcinoma of the first stage, and here, after polychemiotherapeutic treatment, you see uh, uh, there have been doxetat cell and plasma, eight courses, radiation therapy, 60 gray in this uh, regimen, 2.5 gray lymphad. Our patients refused from lymphadenectomy, and despite uh, this refusal, and plus uh, uh, the dose 60 gray, have a look. The patient now uh, does not have a tumor process either. Uh, by the way, lymph collectors were involved. So neither in the area of primary lesion, but it's not always they have such good effect in primary lesion and in the neck. Does it allow us to talk about domineering role of radiation therapy? Here is a, a case with a patient of six year old where first we had a small process, how, how a regional uh, process process was uh, massive. Uh, she had metastasis, she had chronic pharyngitis, so the diagnosis was uh, cancer of uh, oral uh, pharynx and then nasopharynx. Uh, that is how nasopharynx uh, looked like, to a left tubular fold area, and this is how metastasis on the neck looked. Thus, uh, the patient received chemotherapeutic treatment, induction polychemiotherapy, and here you see the medications after that there was radiation therapy 70 gray dose this is how uh, the target, uh, the the tumor looked like, and you see uh, the response of the primary lesion and uh, uh, partial response of the nodes. There is response on the part of the nose. This is another projection on the other side. It's natural the patient was sent for lymphadenectomy. We will receive patomorphosis of the second degree in the uh, lymph nodes. So far, as to this standard lymphadenectomy, especially with the uh, mass uh, lymph node lesions, it cannot be excluded. This is how the patient looks like she is alive. No relapses. Another issue, the choice of the volume of radiation. It's a complex uh, issue, especially when you talk about complex combined treatment and changes of the volume of lesion. Here you see a clinical case, a 56-year-old patient. Uh, look at the primary lesion, and uh, that was uh, uh, the area of nasopharynx, how he looked after uh, polychemiotherapeutic treatment. We gave the dose of 70 gray and uh, our more and more uh, methods such as fusion allowed uh, to deliver uh, the dose precisely. This is how the volumes look like, including lymph collectors, the dose distribution, and uh, with the histogram assessment. And uh, this patient at this uh, moment uh, is fine, no local changes in primary lesion on the neck. And another situation, which is just the opposite, 45-year-old patient, such dissemination of the process, that list of the involved structures. And in the beginning, we started treatment with polychemiotherapy with good effect. Uh, there was partial response. And then there was radiation in the dose of 60 gray, but where was the problem? At this time, this is a debatable issue whether we have an opportunity to exclude from the volume of treatment the risk zones if um, uh, there is uh, initial uh, tumor. Uh, this is uh, the area of uh, uh, trigorium uh, cerebellum uh, and here Pontus cerebellum, and in the beginning there were metastases on the neck, and then later 
this was uh, that zone which uh, uh, required neurosurgical intervention and then there was progression of the process and uh, that was a uh, lethal uh, outcome uh, so at present the standard allow us to uh, well to uh, to find our way in managing patients and we more often talk about the biology of tumors yesterday we talked about disease of neck and uh, head and uh, we have to differentiate between two factors uh, prognostic and predictive factors we often meet the works where we speak about uh, uh, the uh, prognosis prognosis assessment of potential development and predictors uh, potential assessment of the efficacy of certain method of treatment if to look at consolidated information for 2016 you see what Elisa Elisitra as to uh, diseases of nasopharynx there is information we can uh, uh, base ourselves on Epstein bar uh, virus it allows to find solutions uh, in certain way here are prognostic factors they are confirmed and predictive factors are potential not absolutely confirmed information here we see um, uh, lean data and if you see that if DNA is more than 15 in plasma it significantly influence the prognosis for further development of the disease thus that close connection uh, of the presence of virus and nasopharyngeal legion and response to treatment and it at present if you want to receive additional information it requires routine identification of dna in plasma according to chunk of 2014 the level that is recommended to identify it is uh, limited by fourth thousand copies. Thus, modern level of radiotherapy allows uh, precise delivery of dose of ionizing radiation, which makes us more responsible in determining the volume of radiation. Previously, we could take larger volumes. Still, they were required. Uh, well, connection with the equipment. Now, we have to identify the targets. Consecutive uh, chemotherapy uh, treatment also opens new opportunities to treat early curable questions. Another issue is the resection, the resorption of tumor area when here we risk the damage of vital organs. And the separate item is the uh, adjustment of indications for removal of regional info collector. There are four indications, however, there are no reasons, there had been no design re reasons for the non-removal. That applies also to the uh, um, nasopharynx uh, cancer. The priority here is the uh, quality of life. The biology of tumor is also an important issue. We have already identified the predictors for this type of cancer. We can also dare to design individual program for treatment of patients uh, upon biological characteristics. Maybe it makes sense to stratify patients across uh, prognosis and, and different dosage and uh, other types of uh, criteria, including localizations, and we should do not just for other types of cancers, but for nasopharynx cancer too. Thank you. Please, your questions. Thank you for the opportunity to hear such a magnificent press. Um, presentation, but my question is about the number of courses of neo therapy and the criteria for follow-up. That's my first question. And the second question, do you determine the targets before chemotherapy and after chemotherapy? Do you use the original targets or target the offset therapy. And third question, you have a 70 degree and 2.5 degree function. Could you tell me more about this combination? Thank you for this question, for the opportunity to discuss the challenging questions you revealed. As far as the number of uh, chemotherapy uh, Gamma courses uh, is concerned. Usually, we take three plus three courses. More recently, we have six courses of induction chemotherapy, and that's it. 
the determination the uh, determination level is the uh, efficacy criteria and we make sure to have very same equipment the same angles and uh, same overall conditions in order to make the uh, comparison more accurate if patients uh, with uh, positive uh, results have uh, high toxicity, they ask us to continue with their radio treatment, radiology treatment. We take original information before chemotherapy, and that's a major challenge if we take patients that uh, was treated uh, somewhere else. If uh, we have access to this information, then we upload it. We have GTV for the original image. And then the baseline question that we ask if the original damaged GTV area touches the risk area, can we exclude the risk uh, organs from the radiation exposure area? Sometimes it's not worth doing that. And we get local regressions, although sometimes we were Right. As far as the second question is concerned, we have 2.5 per 6 to create a, a traditional fraction with 70 gray. The uh, standard uh, that we use now is 2 gray or less. That is uh, subscribed and in NCCN. But they also have direct indication on compensation of doses at the first uh, at the early stages when compensation takes place. I would also like to ask you, we have just returned from Minsk, we had another presentation there, but there was also the question about the original non-curable patient and when after the radiation therapy we got the total clinical resorption of tumor, the patients anyway went to the surgical operation, surgical intervention. And many scientists, uh, we had the uh, video conference, and they asked us, why did you do that when you had the total resorption of a tumor and you had the fourth grade of damage for many patients. So why did you do that? And the second question, why did you do that short, so shortly after the chemotherapy? Why didn't you let the effect unfold fully? And why didn't you have the operation for the confirmed remnants only, and that's how they consider the issue nowadays. Well, as far as our opinion is concerned, we don't have any extra information to change our mind. Uh, we had the bone destruction in the first case, so we could not let the person stay without surgery, and we were true because we had pathomorphology there. As far as overall approach is concerned, if we have a radical dosage, we are given the right to follow up on the patients for two months. On the other hand, uh, we tend to have more aggressive nasopharynx cancers, and we observe regressions at the earlier stages, even if the original, if especially if uh, original cancer was resistant.